Okay, the next template I'm going to show you how to use is, uh, I mean, again, a simple one. It's a category sort, but it shows you that there's a little bit of infrastructure built on top of it. So I'm going to type in here, category. Again, you can always navigate through, you know, by examples and activities. The more you mess around and play with the software, the better off you're going to be, because that's really how you learn things, is to autonomously go out and take a look and, and try things out and see how they work. So I'm going to look here at uh, interactive. So I'm going to go to, I could do an image sort, but I think. Image arrange. Okay, so I'll drag this one over. You see that if it's got a little F on the top uh, corner of it, that means it's flash based. So it's got a little bit of programming running behind it that allows it to become interactive. So I'm going to edit this one and instead of doing whole bunch like 15. I'm going to do five. And what I'll do is I'll drag them in the correct order here. So I'm going to look for items as pictures. So I'm going to do coins and since I'm Canadian I'm actually going to do Canadian coins. So I'm going to drag in all the coins in order so kids would be learning basically the values at this stage so that's the benchmark we'd be looking from the ODE standards or common core standards about learning the values of money so I'm going to go and Select the dime, and then the quarter. And then for those of you who know, yes, it is a loony. Okay. So now I've got them there. You can password protect these things if you don't. If you're having the kids work through an exercise by themselves individually, say on a computer with a notebook there, um, I'm not going to bother doing that. I'm going to hit OK. You'll see that it randomizes. Okay. So if I have a student come up to the board then, or several students, which is better really because you're actually having a um, higher level of engagement. So I'll have them sort through. I'm going to get one um, mistake in here. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch those two around. All right, so then if I go to check, it's going to go, oh, no, I've got some wrong. If you drag them, it actually sorts on the, it um, autocorrects for you on the fly. That's, I mean, that's flash. So you see that it does that. If I got them wrong and I want to do the solution, I can hit solve, of course. If I want to reset them and scramble them again, I hit reset. Okay. So this one is um, kind of a task that kind of corrects for you, right? It's more or less a self-correcting task. Uh, so it is, you know, the students can see what are right and wrong without you having to verbally say, okay, why is it this way or why is it that way? Um, why do you think that's correct to sort out? Of course, that process is a very valid one. Um, so, you know, you can balance autonomous self-correcting tasks with also feedback, verbal feedback and orientation and shaping. Now if we, uh, I'm going to delete this one off. And we go back to that category sort that I was talking about. So go to category, sort, not image this time, I'm going to use just this pizza structure here. Okay, so you know we've got two categories here. If I hit edit and say I want, we're teaching odd 
and we're teaching even numbers. Okay, so we've got odd and even. So on the odd ones, I'm obviously going to create the variables that are correctly odd, and some evens that are correctly even. Okay, so you can do two column or three column. So you see you have the possibility of sorting out into three. Again, it's just a processing activity. So what it does, it'll jumble them down the bottom here. Okay, same thing as before. We have some flash, so it's actually going to allow us to drag in. So if I think two is odd, which I know it isn't, it's just I've decided to do it that way. So you can see what an error looks like. So if I drag them up in order, of course, we could have students drag them up in order as well, just if we want to put another layer of difficulty to it from lowest to highest. Um, do that, and we'll do that, and we'll do that, and you see that I get two wrong there. So if I go check, oh no, what if I drop it over? It corrects for me. If I solve, it creates a solution. Okay, so that's really kind of sorting activities. Again, I you know encourage you to look through many different activities to see exactly what they're all about, to try to understand them and understand the mechanics that go behind them. Uh, it would be impossible to go over all of them because you know there's basically I think 937 activities within the software.